One of the main ways you can do that this morning, and we'll close with this. The best thing you can do is you've got to begin to pray, and you've got to begin to read God's Word. You don't get through tragedy and heartache and pain in your life accidentally. You don't get through it just by coming and sitting in church. You and I have got to be the one to take the action to remove it from our life. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says this, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. You begin to read scripture, I promise you, you'll get convicted. You begin to read God's word, he'll begin to speak to you in ways that you don't want him to speak to you. He'll begin to move in a way that will change your life forever. James 4, 17 says this, and this one always gets me. For he who knows what is right and doesn't do it, sins. I'm not so much talking to the lost people this morning. I'm talking to some good old sanctified saints this morning. You see, you and I know exactly what is right. We know exactly what is wrong. We know exactly what we need to do in our life. We know that the addictions and the pain and the, and the habits that we have in our life that has controlled us, that has handicapped us, that has chained us and kept us from moving forward in our marriage, in our business, in our friendships, everything. You can only go so far because you haven't given it to God. Listen, my attitude this morning is this. I don't care what I walked through in 2012. It doesn't matter to me how great 2012 was or how bad 2012 was. A lot of good things happened to me in 2012, but there were some things said and done to me in 2012 that I didn't appreciate, that I didn't enjoy, that I didn't like, and more importantly, that I didn't deserve. But it doesn't matter. It happened. Some things are said and done to my family and my friends that impacted me, and it caused me to have a negative attitude. It caused me to say and do things maybe I shouldn't have done, and I don't want to track that mess into 2013. You and I have the opportunity this morning, 2013, first Sunday of the year, brand new slate. We have the, the, the floor has been swept clean. It's, it's without mud. It's without dirt. It's shiny. It's nice. All we have to do is take our shoes off. All we have to do is be willing before we make another step into 2013 to say, you know what? I walk through mess. Look down at your shoes and your boots and have the sense to say, you know what? I'm not tracking that in to 2013. I'm not about to take another step, another phone call. I won't watch another show. I won't get involved in another business deal without taking my shoes off. I refuse to take last year's hurt, pain, and sin and habits into 2013. I will walk fresh and anew in the fullness of who God is and not in the fullness who I am. I refuse to track doubt and sin and depression and hurt and pain and sickness into 2013. Today I'm saying taking my shoes off. I won't take another step. I won't make another move without hitting my knees and asking God for direction, asking God for clarification because I don't want a repeat of 2012, 2009, 1984. I want God in control of my life and whatever I track in, I don't want my wife to have to clean it up. I don't want my kids to have to walk through it. I don't want them to have to deal with it. Today I'm taking my shoes off. I refuse to walk any longer. I refuse to track it in to another relationship. I refuse to track it into church another time. People walk every Sunday and every Wednesday and they walk through those doors and they track into the house of God hurt and pain and unforgiveness because they were hurt in a church, they were hurt by a pastor, they were hurt in ministry, and they track it in and it affects the way you worship, it affects the way you serve, and it affects the way you give. This morning, you got to take your shoes off. There's nothing wrong with you this morning. You don't need to be saved. Uh, you don't need to be delivered. You don't have any demons you need casted out. You just need to take your shoes off. You've walked through some things. You need to let God bless you. You need to let God wash your feet. You need to let him one more time show you that he loves you, that he wants to use you this morning. We're starting a fast tomorrow. 
Many of you guys have fasted with us the last four years. It's 21 days. Jesus challenges us in Matthew 6 that when you give, when you pray, and when you fast, it's a command that he gives each and every one of us. When you do those three things, it opens the windows of heaven and allows God to bless you. Some of you are sitting here this morning. You know what you need to get rid of. You know what you've walked through this year, and you're, you're in your mind, you're processing it right now. You're thinking, how am I going to quit this? How am I going to do this? Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. You find an account in Scripture where the disciples are trying to cast demons out of a demon-possessed boy. And they've done all they can do, and they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, we've done exactly what you've told us to do. Why can't we cast the demon out of this little boy? Jesus looks at him and said, this kind only comes out through prayer and through fasting. There's some things in your life this morning, you're going to take your shoes off and symbolically just saying, Lord, I give it to you. But it's going to take more than you just praying. It's going to take you praying and fasting. It's going to take that extra step. For you, you make a commitment and say, you know what? I'm going to give it to you, Lord. I'm going to take some things away in my life. You know, if Jesus could accomplish everything that he came to do without fasting, then why did he fast? It's something that he modeled before the disciples. The sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes is part of his sermon. When you pray, when you give, and when you fast, this is what will happen. I have packets out there already designed, 21-day journal, 21 days every day for you, something, scripture for you to read, something for you to write down, something that will bless you and help you in this 21 days. Some of you will do an all-out fast. Some of you will do a Daniel fast. Some of you do a partial fast. We'll get more into that in the next few weeks. Some of you this morning, you're going to have to combine what you're going through, not just with prayer, but you're going to have to sacrifice something. Fasting is something that you have, it has to cost you something or it doesn't count. That's the whole point of a sacrifice. It has to really hurt. My kids find that out every year because they start their fast with, you know, we're not going to watch television or anything like that. And then they realize you got to have the television to use the Xbox and then, well, that, that didn't work. So they change their fast and they go to something else. They're going to fast their homework. They're going to go do homework. For, they get real creative. Listen, I, I, I know what God's put in my heart for 2013 for this fellowship, the ministries, what God's going to do. And I look across this room, there's so many lives that have been changed in 2012 as a result of fasting. Some of you are sitting here this morning and you think, Pastor, I don't, I just, God just sent me the lighthouse. He did as a result of us fasting for the last two or three years, believing God to send the right people, sending us people with the right heart and the right vision and the spirit to give. Lord, send us who you want us to have. We've prayed a lot of you in. Prayed you in and asked God to send you. And because of that, God's blessing your life and blessing the fellowship. Over the next three weeks, you're going to have the opportunity. This morning, we'll give you opportunity. Just say, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm not tracking it in any longer to anything else that I do, anything that I say. I need to let it go this morning. And you combine forgiveness and you combine that with fasting and taking the next three weeks to really honor God with your life. Honor God with your time. I believe with all my heart that God will change your life. I heard somebody say the other day that it, it takes 21 days to break a habit. If you can do something for 21 days, it changes. I hear workout people all the time saying, if you can just work out for 21 days, if you can get in that habit, just, just stick with it. Stick with it. It becomes a pattern in your life. It becomes a pattern. Take the next 21 days in this fellowship to honor God with our life. Take food away. Take television away. Take Facebook away. I lost half of you on Facebook right there. Well, I love God, but I don't know if I can do it without Facebook. I promise you, you, you'd be amazed. 
how much joy you'll have in your life if you don't look at Facebook 45 times a day. Amen. Preach it. That's good stuff. I'm not preaching against Facebook. I'm just saying some of us need a little less of it. Need a little less Facebook and get your face in the book. and That would help. Get a little less of that, a little more of this. It will help you. I'm taking my shoes off. 2013 is going to be a brand new year. I refuse I refuse to track any hurt, any pain, any rejection, any loss into 2013. I don't want it in my life. I don't want my family to have to deal with it. I don't want to have to deal with it in my marriage. Let me be honest this morning. If you ever find yourself, let's be honest for a second. Y'all should have taken your halos off at the door already. But if you haven't, go ahead and take that off right now. Symbolically, take it off. There we go. In your marriage, just be arguing about stuff. And, and, and right through the argument and through the disagreement and everything, you realize, why are we arguing about this? What does this have to... This isn't even our problem. And it usually starts with someone brought it in. You, you come home with a story from work or someone, a friend, or you saw it on Facebook. And then all of a sudden, it becomes a conversation and you're talking about it. And before you know it, you realize on a second this is not even this has nothing really to do with us it's not even my business and now we've, we've gone from talking about that to now we're arguing with each other and what, what does this have to you know what have, you tracked it in and it's just like a few days ago when I looked down my bedroom floor and there's mud from the creek bed 15 miles away has no business in my bedroom floor doesn't belong there but because it's there, my wife took the broom. I'm so thankful that she did. She swept it up. She had to clean that mess up. As a result of something I walked through that had nothing to do with her, had nothing to do with the family. But because I didn't take my shoes off, I tracked it into my home. Some of you, you don't work in the best environment. It's your job. It's your living. You're not around the best people. And sometimes you track some things home. You track some things in. And this year, you need to make up your mind off before you go, make your mind up before you go home. You're taking your shoes off. You're not going to track that in to your family. You're not going to track that into your relationship with your kids, your relationship with your wife and your husband. You're not going to track that mess in. Everybody, shake your head like this, like you're going to do it, like you agree. Even if you don't, just shake it like that. If you'll do that. God will begin to change some things in your life. I know it sounds silly. And you may have to even, listen, it sounds dumb, but you may even have to do this. Some of you already do it before you go home. But you may have to before you walk in the door. You need to just go get a rug, a little place, and just take your shoes off, whether you need to or not. And every time you take them off, just saying, Lord, I take whatever I walk through today, God. I'm leaving it here. I'm not bringing it home with me. I'm going to be careful what I track into my house. Be careful what I say and what I do in my house. I need you to hear me this morning. I need you to listen to me. If you hadn't listened to anything else, I need you to hear this. It's important that you guard what you track into your home. It's important what you turn on in your home. Your kids can hear it. They can be sitting in their bedroom. They know what you're watching. They know what you're listening to. They know. I watched my two-year-old niece pick up an iPad. Go to her favorite game. She can't even talk. She can work an iPad. Don't think kids don't know what's going on. You better take your shoes off. Dad, take your shoes off. Mom, take your shoes off. Husband, take your shoes off. Wife, take your shoes off. Don't you track the conversations and the negativity and all the griping from your girlfriends. Don't you bring that into your home. Don't you watch trash on TV and listen to all that mess and track it into your marriage. Now this is You won't get mad at me, you go ahead and get mad at me, but this is truth. 
Guys, don't track that filthy talk, nasty jokes, all that kind. Don't you track that into your home and into your marriage. One, if you're voluntarily getting involved in it, you need to ask for forgiveness. But there's a lot of things that happen, said or done, and we're just in, it's, we can't help it. We hear it, third party. But you know what you've heard, don't track that in. Don't even come home and tell your wife about it. She don't want to know. She don't want to know about everybody else's failures. And don't you track that doubt and unbelief. Don't track it in. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off and make up your mind this year. It's a brand new year. I refuse to track sin and doubt. I'm not going to track what I walk through into 2013. Stand with me this morning.